Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 6 starts now. As the families of the students killed in Monday's MSU shooting rampage begin the painful process of saying goodbye, the father of the shooter is answering our questions about potential warning signs in the hope they shared. Good to have you with us for Local 4 News at 6. I'm Devin Skillian. And I'm Christy McDonald in for Kimberly Gill tonight. We begin with the MSU campus shootings and where things stand right now. Classes are set to resume on Monday despite objections from some students who say it is just too soon. Some we spoke with want classes moved online until additional security measures can be put in place on campus. Five students who were wounded in Monday's shooting are still in the hospital. Four of them remain in critical condition at this hour. Visitation and memorial services for the victims have now started to get underway. Alex Varner's family is asking for privacy in regard to her services. That is, of course, a request we are honoring. Visitation for Arielle Anderson is set for Monday, and a funeral for her is Tuesday in Detroit. Brian Frazier's family is uh, actually welcoming cameras into his service. That's tomorrow, and if you'd like to watch, we'll live stream it tomorrow on Local 4 Plus starting at 11 a.m. Now, meantime, police are still trying to determine why a man with no ties to Michigan State University would go there and start shooting people. We know he lived a few miles from campus with his father, who spoke today with our Sean Lay. And Sean uh, joins us now from Lansing. Sean, uh, Michael McRae insists he never saw warning signs hinting at this level of violence that we saw Monday night. And why do we want to speak with him, Devin? Because we want to ask him specific questions. What do you know, Mr. McRae? What have you told investigators about possible warning signs? Did you know about the two nine millimeter handguns that police say his son bought and had in the house there with him? And did he know anything about that note that included a hit list? We spoke to Michael McRae on the phone a short time ago. So I like you can't tell your kid what's in his mind to do. All we know is you love him, you love him, you love him, you take care of him, you do the best you can to be the best dad in the world. And when something like this happened, we can't control their mind what's inside their brains. Cause you don't know what you can think of. That's the voice of Michael McRae, the father of MSU gunman, Anthony McRae. McRae answering all of my questions as we worked to see if there were red flags, any warning signs that his son might possibly be capable of taking young lives, ruining lives and shattering the feeling of safety at Michigan State. McRae says, yes, his son changed when his mother died two years ago, but he says he never saw any warning signs of his son becoming a killer. Let me ask you, this. do you think he was angry that he didn't get a job up at MSU? Is that no, part? No, not about that. He was just mad about losing mommy, and he didn't, didn't want to let his grief go, and he, he misses his mom, and he, you know, mama boy, and, you know, home alone, and, you know, mommy did everything for him, and dad gave him love, and I lost my wife back 45 years, and he couldn't accept the fact that mommy was gone. I asked McCray if he saw the two 9 millimeter handguns police say they found with his son. McCray says not only did he not see the guns, but living under the same roof, he rarely saw his son. All right, back here live at the State House. McCray says his son spent his entire time in his room either playing video games. He says he ate in that room, uh, went to the use the bathroom in that room and rarely spoke to his son, saying he gave him his privacy. So those are some of the very small insights we're getting from Mr. McCray. But Devin McCray did offer his apologies and his condolences for all the lives that have been changed forever. Back to you. Boy, so many of those fascinating. All right, Sean, uh, tomorrow, the men's basketball game in Ann Arbor is still on, uh, but the rivalry element will be set aside in favor of a show of support for MSU. There will be a moment of silence. Uh, the Michigan band will play the Spartan alma mater and pass out Sparty stickers too. Programmable wristbands, blinking green and white, are going to light up the, yes, the Michigan arena in MSU colors. They'll fly a 12 by 8 Spartan strong flag and they'll pass out 2,000 specialized green and white warm-up shirts. In more news tonight, an arrest this morning in Oak Park has police convinced they've helped end a deeply worrisome crime spree. Detectives say they caught a peeping Tom in the act. That came after reports from Oak Park, Warren and East Point. And as Local 4's Rod Maloney tells us tonight, they were very concerned the alleged peeper may have been looking to do far worse. Home security begins and ends with that feeling of safety and security inside your home. But for the residents of this neighborhood, police are saying this guy put all of that 
in jeopardy. It's not a sight you often see, a man walking around in the middle of the night carrying a ladder. And yet for the last couple of months, Warren Police Commissioner Bill Dwyer says this man did exactly that and a whole lot more. We have a career criminal here. Using the ladder to prop up against a Warren house in the Sherman Street area and peering inside. We know that he's committed at least violations, home burglaries or peeping toms in at, eight, at least eight locations. Uh, five in East Point, two in Warren, and then earlier this morning, Oak Park. Dwyer telling Local 4 an undercover surveillance team started watching him and says that they saw him operating in a number of different ways. They arrested him in Oak Park this morning, and they believe it stopped a much more disconcerting crime. He was observed prying open a back window to a home that was occupied by three young kids. I mean, 16, 10, and 8, I believe they were. Uh, what his intent was, we're not sure, but we do know that these peeping toms escalate. And Dwyer tells Local 4 his investigators teamed up with officers in several other towns to make this investigation work. He's 41. He uh, lives in Detroit, uh, but he's got uh, a rap sheet that contains crimes and convictions such as assaults, drugs, weapons, and home invasions. Now, the... The police department has confiscated his phone and they expect that they may find more things in there, uh, you know, perhaps going up the ladder and taking pictures. Uh, they want to look at that because they think that that's going to yield for them the possibility of still more charges in this case. Back to you. Yeah, Rod, disturbing to say the least. It, for anyone else who might feel that this man may have been peering into their homes, is there anything that they should be doing to help along the investigation? Well, precisely, uh, Chief Dwyer is saying that he wants our Commissioner Dwyer, he wants to hear from anybody who thinks that this guy was at their home or they have any, even a suspicion of that to call the Warren Police Department right away. All right, thanks so much. Rod Maloney reporting for us live tonight. A Macomb Correctional Facility officer arraigned today for bringing contraband into prison. 23-year-old Miguel Priest is charged with misconduct in office. Prosecutors say when Priest arrived at the facility last September, an officer noticed some of his packages seemed abnormal. And after a search, officers found cell phones and drugs. Priest is facing five-year felonies each for misconduct and for bringing in the contraband. Well, we are heading into the weekend. Friday couldn't come soon enough with a little bit of sunshine out there. This and you tried to do a slip and fall this morning, <laughs> didn't you? Walking the dog, it was not yeah. good. It was a little precarious. I, uh, I had I had a close call myself on the drivers. It was, I think that's a story for a lot of folks, Kim. It, it is because the main roads, they pre-treated. It's the side streets and the sidewalks that I think caught some people off guard a little bit because we did have that layer of ice that was hidden under a little bit of snow. Right now, Exact Track 40 radar much better, much easier for the evening commute, although we have not gotten above freezing today, so there will still be some slippery spots if you're walking the dog tonight or if you're out and about. 21 in Pontiac, 20 in Mount Clemens, 23 at Metro Airport. This is 7 to 10 degrees colder right now than it was at the same time yesterday. Weekend forecast, we do get above freezing tomorrow with highs in the low 40s, but it's going to be windy, so it will only feel like it's in the 30s tomorrow, and then some melting certainly going on by Sunday as highs approach 48 degrees. If you want to keep up to date on all the latest forecast information, the best way to do it in between our newscasts is to download the Forewarn Weather app. You can have interactive radar right in the palm of your hand. Just go to your favorite app store and type in WDIV. All right, Kim, look at that. Drone 4 over the big nice. party getting underway in Royal Oak, and that's this year's Winter Blast. Yeah, lots of food, music, winter activities, and our Brandon Rue has been getting a taste of it all. All right, you were drinking Fago last hour, Brandon. What are you doing now? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Literally and figuratively tasting everything around here. And I'm sort of on the edge of the property here for Winter Blast in Royal Oak. And it's all about the kids' fun, from skiing to the zip line, which is one of the highlights here at the Winter Blast in Royal Oak. Really, really cool. And if you can see behind us, the zip line is presented by Baker College. And we have Eileen Pecoraro. Did I say yep, it? You got it. Man, I was so nervous about that one. <laughs> From Baker College. And this is your second year bringing or presenting the zip line. It is. We're really excited. This is a special year for us as our second year sponsoring the zip line. And it's also, we just launched our new flagship campus here in Royal Oak last month. 
And so this is really bringing us into the community and having lots of fun with everybody here. It takes about 20 seconds to get untied from the zip line, so we've got some drone uh, for video or live pictures of some of the skiing. Again, one of the many attractions here around the kids zone. And Eileen, uh, you also have a tent here for, as you said, those who maybe don't want the adventure of being up three stories. Yeah, if you're not ready to go 34 feet in the air and sail <laughs> down the street, woo, 300 yards, um, you can come join us over in the United Way tent. We have our Baker College table there with a fun photo opportunity for all ages. Um, and Saturday and Sunday, we're going to have some of our nursing students here celebrating American Heart Month, which that's what February represents. And they'll be giving out some information about um, heart health and stroke and, and heart attack awareness. So. Eileen Pecoraro with Baker College. Thank you. Have a great weekend. Thanks. Come on down. All right, so we mentioned the zip line, of course, the ski hill and the ice sculptures. Devin and Christy, I wanted to mention that there is a special uh, sculpture of Michigan State with a beautiful heart to it as a tribute uh, to what everybody in East Lansing is going through. So we encourage yeah. everybody to come down and check that out. Go green. Go white. State strong. Nicely done. Thanks, Brandon. Everybody doing their part. It's just on, on at the top of everyone's mind right now in so many different walks of life. Really great. All right, Brandon. All right, still ahead, uh, something that is often missing from the recovery process after a heart attack or heart surgery. What you should know ahead of time in case it happens to you or someone you love. Back with more in a moment.